not just a bunch of numbers, as an attempt to familiarize teachers with the wonderful patterns and so-called tricks based on those patterns in the multiplication tables. Central to most of these patterns is the concept of the tens complement. Tens complements are two numbers that add up to ten. One and nine, two and eight, three, seven, four and six, and five and five. Here we've arranged the numbers one through nine ascending and descending so that the complements are above and below one another. Four above six, eight above two, nine below one, and so forth. It's interesting to note with the complements arranged this way that if you cross multiply seven times seven and then the complements of seven and seven, three times three, the product you get will end in a nine in either case. Seven times seven equals forty-nine. Three times three equals nine. In the same way, if you multiply six times eight and their complements four times two, you get a product in each case ending in an eight. Six times eight equals forty-eight. Four times two equals eight. Eight times seven and two times three both have products ending in six. Here are more examples when two numbers are multiplied and their complements are multiplied and the answers in each case end in the same ones digit. Pairs of numbers such as these that end in the same ones digit will always have a difference that ends in zero. They'll always be 10, 20, 30, 40 apart and so forth. Let's look at what we now know. Two numbers that total 10 are complements. The product of two numbers and the product of their complements always end in the same ones digit. The products will always be a multiple of 10 apart. I'll be using 6 times 8 as an example as we go on. Many students have had trouble with 6 times 8. If it's difficult for you, you can start by multiplying the complements 4 times 2 and you know the ones digit right away. It gets very interesting. To find out how many tens we have to add to the 8, we can add 6 and 8. Their sum, 14, lets us know that the difference between them is 4 times 10 or 40. To multiply 6 times 8, we can multiply the complements 4 times 2 and get an 8, and then add 6 and 8, take the ones digit from the answer, multiply it by 10, and add the two results. It seems rather involved, but you can learn to do it very quickly. Applying what we know to multiplying 7 times 9, we first multiply their complements 3 and 1, resulting in a product of 3. Then we add 7 and 9, the answer is 16, and 6 times 10 is 60, and therefore the answer is 3 plus 60, or 63. Multiplying 9 times 6 is easy. The complements are 1 and 4, and the sum is 15. Therefore, the answer is 4 plus 50, or 54. To learn why this trick works, we'll use two approaches. Here's a standard multiplication table with 10 columns and 10 rows. 
When we look for 6 times 8 on a multiplication table, we normally find 6 in the rows and trace across that row until we come to the 8th column where we find the answer 48. The complements of 6 and 8 are 4 and 2. In order to find 4 times 2 on the chart, we trace across the 4th row until we come to the 2nd column where we find 8 as the product. Because 5 times 5 equals 25 is centrally located between rows 4 and 6 and also centrally located between columns 2 and 8, we find that 5 times 5 is 25 will be right in between the two of them. Here we look at 9 times 9 and 1 times 1. Note that again 5 times 5 equals 25 is in the very middle. Here it's in the very middle of the complementary problems 8 times 7 and 2 times 3. Let's look back at the pair 6 times 8 and 4 times 2. I'm going to show you that we can move around the multiplication table on some very interesting paths. We'll start our paths each time from the middle of the chart at 5 times 5 equals 25. Here we take one step to the right moving from 5 times 5 to 5 times 6. Now we'll take a step back in the opposite direction from 5 times 5 to 5 times 4. Notice that the two products 20 and 30 are 10 apart. Now another pair of steps in opposite directions. Note this time that 15 and 35 are 20 apart. Now we've taken a third pair of steps out. This time the products are 10 and 40 which are 30 apart. And finally we take one step up from 5 times 2 to 4 times 2 and one step down from 5 times 8 to 6 times 8. Notice again the difference between the two products 8 and 48 is 40 this time. Here are the values of the steps we took. Those that we took horizontally are each steps of 5 in the fives table. When we moved from 10 to 8, we were in the 2's table and we moved 2 points down to 8. When we moved from 40 to 48, we were in the 8th column and we moved 8 down. As we've noted, each pair of opposite steps totals 10. Here, a step 5 down to 20 and a step 5 up to 30. Our next pair of steps are also in the fifth row. We move 5 down from 20 to 15 and 5 up from 30 to 35. Each pair again totals 10. The third pair of steps totaling 10 take us out to 5 times 2 and 5 times 8 which are 10 and 40. Up till now, our pairs of steps have all been in the fifth row and each pair of steps has totaled 10. Now we're going to take a pair of steps that also total 10, but this time one of the steps will be in the second column and be worth 2 and the other step will be in the eighth column and worth 8. Again, they total 10. Continued in section 2.